Bitcoin pushed up to over $66,490. And it's an interesting structure that is emerging with some more potential gains in the horizon. So in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the technical analysis on BTC share. My thoughts and opinions as to where I think that price action is heading on the small, medium and longer time frames. As I get into today's video, if you do find it useful and informative, smash that like button. If you are new to the channel, subscribe and let's take a look at what's going on with Bitcoin. So here we have a Bitcoin paired up with USDT. We're on the one uh, hour Binance chart here, and we've seen good progression to the upside. We found support uh, here on Thursday uh, down at the 0100 hours on the 200 EMA. This is an area where I actually narrowly missed a long position on BTC. I was hoping that we'd come down just a little bit further and I missed it by a hair, which is unfortunate because we've seen some pretty nice gains ever since we kind of retested that 200 EMA. Uh, up here, uh, basically into that peak that we saw uh, at uh, 1400 hours yesterday, this was a 6.11% move. So really, really good structured move to the upside. Now, there is, of course, some concerns with this move. Uh, we are, of course, going to be taking a look at the, the bigger macro picture in a moment as well. So bear with me on that. Um, but it does look like there's still some progression potentially here to the upside on this one hour time frame. OK, so as we can kind of see, if I draw in a trend line on the lower side here, you can kind of see how we've been testing this and it's been kind of bouncing from this range and it's been working quite well. And of course, uh, we have the upper area of this as well. This is an ascending wedge. This is going to break down at some point. I just don't think it's going to happen right away. OK, so this particular pattern, we can see uh, more kind of, you know, bouncing around in this little area before eventually we get that break to the downside. OK, higher highs, higher lows, but we have overlapping kind of candlesticks in that pattern. So it does unfortunately have bearish vibes about it, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Taking a look at where we are on the momentum on this one hour time frame, I'm going to be looking for another push up a little bit here. Um, no guarantees that we go up into another higher high, but I think there's a, a high probability of that. Uh, of course, we need to be aware of our positioning on the four hour, eight hour and daily because they're not in the strongest momentum uh, based positions. If we take a look at the relative strength index uh, through the idea of divergence. Here you can see hidden bullish divergence. Uh, that has happened just as we kind of see this little break to the upside. So again, some confidence in the market potentially on the back of that uh, just here on the one hour time frame on the four hour time frame you can see that hidden bullish divergence actually happened at 20 hundred hours on wednesday and you can kind of see that was down here as we were kind of testing out some of these lows so you could have got in on a potential long uh, pretty much at the 20 hundred hours uh, in line of the midnight kind of breakout which is really quite an interesting kind of thing to kind of keep an eye on um, so want to be aware of that on an eight hour time frame again the hidden bullish divergence at uh, 1600 hours uh, on Wednesday. Okay, different time frames, but still showing you hidden bullish divergences across those time frames. If we turn that off and bring in our volume profiles, you can see the volume profiles are significantly lower now uh, as we kind of see this kind of move uh, to these higher highs, essentially. Now, if we take a look at that, we can see and we can acknowledge that we do, of course, see volume profiles being a major problem for BTC. So as we had this correction to the downside, it was good to see volumes drop, but we haven't seen any significant volume coming back in to help push us up a little bit higher. Volumes are, of course, decreasing here as we go up into higher highs on price. And you can see that just like so. So there's a divergence between what the price action is doing and what the volume profiles are doing. Not necessarily so much with the uh, relative strength index, but it's interesting to kind of keep an eye on to see whether or not there's going to be significant volume really coming in to drive this price action higher or whether or not actually we're going to get be getting that break to the downside. So there's a few things to kind of be keeping an eye on in this uh, a one hour time frame. It does look like there's the chance for a bit more of a push to the upside before we get into any major corrections. And if we take a look at this from an Elliott Wave theory point of view, uh, we could, of course, acknowledge that this, it does look to me like there's still more potential here for a bit of a push to the upside. In line with some of the, the numbers that we've been talking about a few weeks ago, actually, was uh, up towards that kind of $68,000. And you can see right in here, 67.9 to 68.7, uh, essentially being this interesting point of 
of uh, of basically where we could see the price action heading. Now, obviously, that's a one to one. We don't think that's necessarily going to happen, um, but we can see that that's a very interesting place for the price action to go, specifically since the previous swing high was $70,000. So what's the trading opportunity here? Well, the trading opportunity to me looks like there's still a little bit more room to the upside, but uh, it is going to be one of the ones where we actually see more profit to be made from shorting Bitcoin than there is to be made from going long on Bitcoin at the moment. Um, but there are some trading opportunities nonetheless. So we can go long. Uh, let's hypothetically just say on market value right now. Stop loss would have to come down lower than the 50 EMA, 50 SMA, because that would be where we'll be looking for support. And then, of course, we'll look for 1.5 on the risk reward ratio, specifically up towards that kind of $67,900 level. We may, in fact, even just lower that stop loss lower than this previous swing low that we had over this side. And just to make sure that we kind of do hit into that range of about 1.5 on the risk reward ratio, whilst giving us some breathing room. So this one, hypothetically, is an entry around 65,975. Uh, uh, stop loss at 64,686 and take profit at 67,905. That's a 1.5 risk-reward ratio. So that would be the approach. But I do think that if we don't really want to kind of take the gamble on the long, we could, of course, be thinking about short positions as we tap into these higher ranges and then start thinking about another move to the downside uh, in line with kind of the broader market and, of course, what we think is going on on the daily time frame. And talking about trading, Blowfin has some exclusive bonuses up for grabs for the Cheeky Crypto community using the link in the description down below. They're basically launching campaign 2.0, whale campaign 2.0, where you could win a Model 3, a Tesla Model 3. Now, there's a few different prizes up for grabs here for new signups who basically are just actively trading. So whatever you are trading right now, just trade it on Blowfin and you're going to be in this uh, campaign. So basically, it starts off with an Apple Watch SE. Uh, this is basically for trading volume above 3 million. And uh, so obviously with leverage, these numbers are not actually that difficult to hit. Uh, with trading volume above 15 million, we're talking about a Herman Miller chair. So if you're someone who sits at a desk all the time, that's a fantastic prize up for grabs there. We've got trading volume over 25 million. You're going to be looking at a Canon EOS R5. Uh, we have trading volume above 50 million for a travel fund of $5,000. Uh, and if you're into your, your motorcycles, well, there's a fantastic opportunity here for volume above the 100 million, a Kawasaki Ninja 650. And of course, the Model 3 down there for 300 million in volume or more. Now, of course, this is on top of the usual $10,000 deposit and trade rewards. Again, this scales up according to your activity and deposit. So deposit $100 all the way through to uh, $20,000. And of course, there's going to be various different amounts of rewards that you can get on that campaign. So basically, just by start, start signing up uh, using the link in the description down below and depositing and trading, you're going to be eligible for up to the 10,000. And of course, if you're trading actively and you're getting some decent volumes on there, then of course, you're going to be in the whale campaign 2.0 as well with some fantastic uh, deals available. So what are you guys waiting for? Check out the link in the description down below. Sign up to Blowfin. Uh, it's a KYC free exchange and uh, basically start bagging yourself some of these fantastic deals. So let's roll this up into a daily time frame. Okay, so on the daily time frame here, you can see that we still have this progression to the upside and it's looking pretty good. Uh, we did obviously come up into this targeted range that we've been talking about as the resistances, 65 to 66. Uh, that was what we're talking about uh, just a couple of days ago, actually. And from our kind of structure here, we can see and uh, acknowledge that things have progressed quite nicely. Uh, taking a look at this particular pattern here, uh, we are in that upper area of expectations now. Okay, so the expectation on our kind of C wave structure does come in at the 66,358 to the 68 635. That is a ABC structure in here with the Y wave looking to finish in that range as well. And basically that there concludes this entire structure. Okay, so we, it's potentially possible that maybe that Y wave uh, does go a little bit higher and I'm just going to do the due diligence to see what that would look like. Um, so that is really coming in um, at this slightly higher range. I'm going to go ahead and just remove the other fib. Uh, basically, 69,741 uh, to 74,530. Uh, 
eight. Okay, so an interesting kind of structure. If we do break up into a higher high, it's good, but it doesn't kind of negate the idea of this being still a corrective pattern because on this daily time frame, we are still in daily structure, uh, daily corrective structures with the overlapping nature of the candlesticks. So for the most part, it looks to me like we're coming up to the finishing structure here on the daily time frame for Bitcoin. Taking a look at our momentum indicator is heavily overbought. So we are looking for a bit of a pivot and a bit of a, a move to the downside on the daily time frame from the stochastic RSI. Turn that off, bring on the divergence indicator. The trend is, of course, moving up towards overbought. The last time that we were this high was July 21st. Um, we'll take a look at that price action. The time before that uh, was May, uh, 20th of May. Uh, and uh, yeah, so basically, this is where we can see historically the price action has rejected here uh, for Bitcoin's price action. So if this holds as resistance on this relative strength index, that's going to be a very, very interesting place for Bitcoin to potentially get a reversal in the market. Now, taking a look at what happened in previous areas where well, we had that move at $70,000 and then a move to $49,000 afterwards. Uh, the time before that, we had the price action up at $72,000 and it moved down uh, to the $52,000. Now, obviously, we cannot get gauge the depth of a move based on these historical corrective patterns from the relative strength index. But if we were to repeat this process, well, we are going to be looking for, in my opinion, a pretty significant shift in Bitcoin's price action. OK, so we want to be aware of that. It's not something that we want to be uh, shying away from in any way, sense of uh, shape or form volume profiles on the daily time frame. As we are having this push to the upside, we have price going up higher. And at the same time as price going up higher, volumes are decreasing. Uh, this is telling us that there's a, a lack of appetite to continue this push to the upside. So unfortunately, although we are seeing some good gains in the market, essentially it does to me look like we are running out of momentum and the market is looking for an excuse to sell. So where we are tapping into these higher ranges now, finally hitting those expectations that we've had for a few few weeks, it's good to kind of see this potentially coming to an end and actually starting to cool off. And of course, I've been quite vocal about saying that I suspect a move more towards that kind of forty to $44,000. Obviously, we have to lose $49,000 first. So $49,000 is like my, in my mind, a minimum expectation that I have. And I'd like to be wrong about that. And the way I would be wrong about that would be a break above 70,079. So if we can break above that $70,080 level, then we can be more confident that, yeah, with a high probability that we maybe won't go down as low as 40,000 to 44,000. If we remain lower than $70,079.99, which is the swing high that we had on the 29th of July, if we remain lower than that, then all we're doing here is setting a lower high on the daily time frame in a heavily overbought uh, area on the stochastic RSI and the relative strength index and um, the divergence indicator. We will be looking for a big move to the downside, in my opinion, at least testing out the 200 EMA to start with, which sits just short of $60,000. If you lose the 200 EMA, I think it's fair play to be thinking about double bottoms between 49000 and 53000 And if you can't keep those, well, we're well, that point we are talking 40 to 44,000 in my opinion. So there's a lot still to happen in the market for Bitcoin. And it's good to see progression is happening, but I don't think this is the breakout that we've been looking for. The structures to me look way too corrective and not really trend based. We're not seeing the kind of trends that we want to see to receive reversals in the market. All we're doing here is setting lower highs and lower lows on the daily time frame. So just be aware that the market is still incredibly volatile. There's still some huge opportunities, but it doesn't look like this is the opportunity to be going long for that kind of bigger macro picture on the kind of, you know, 2025 bull market peaks and stuff like that. I think that will come slightly later in the year. But of course, these are just my thoughts and opinions on the data in the charts as I personally see it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below or join us in our free Discord server. We would love to hear from you. And if you haven't done so already, guys, check out this video right here. It's not one you're going to want to miss.